hello and welcome to this affinity photo tutorial and it's about the adjustment presets or LUTs that you can get for affinity photo now one of the most seen questions I see in Facebook groups and other places is to do with affinity photo presets where to buy them how to use them what are they etc etc now the intro for this video covers something that is the same on all formats of Affinity Photo so will be the same in both videos the one for the PC and Mac and the other for the iPad version now the term preset in this context is very misleading more so I would imagine for those moving over from Photoshop now I don't own Photoshop but from the Photoshop tutorials I've seen, they look like the sort of actions that you get with Photoshop are sort of part macro and part LUT. Whereas Affinity Photo presets you can buy, you will get for free, or you can get for free, will be 100% LUTs. If you do an internet search for Affinity Photo presets, you will find many results but and it is a big but although Affinity Photo will let you make and save presets for pretty much all of the adjustment layers the only adjustment that will allow you to export to other people or import from other people's their presets is the LUT adjustment so websites like Artixty, I think I have pronounced that correctly, advertise 5,000 plus presets for Affinity Photo, but they are just selling LUTs. To Artixty's credit, they state that they are LUTs. Many I've seen do not. But in all honesty, who needs 5,000 plus LUTs? You you are not going to try out all 5,000 on every picture that you edit and if you install them into Affinity Photo you will most likely slow down your PC Mac or iPad so much that it will become impossible to use in my opinion it's best to find a few that you like or maybe better still make your own and just have these 10 or so you like installed as presets then just access the others if and when you need something a bit different most of the text for this narration has been lifted from a written tutorial I did I think back in November on this subject and you can download that from Dropbox it, will, it was made for the PC Mac version of Affinity Photo but should be just as relevant for the iPad. I will add a link to that file in the description of this video. Now before starting this tutorial, a quick disclaimer. I may not get the facts about LUTs 100% right. This is just how I think they work. But in truth, if what I'm going to say isn't quite how they work, the end result is all that really matters so hopefully no harm no fail so what is a LUT well LUT or LUT stands for look up table which I believe was originally designed for video editing but can also be used with stills cameras I believe as the name suggests it is a list or a table of mathematical settings assigned to colors now I'm not sure if they use hex code numbers or some other form of numbering but for the sake of my argument let's just assume they are using hex codes the hex code for black is 000000, 000, 000, 000, 000. and the hex code for white is FFF FFF now if the lookup table tells the software to alter all pixels that are 000000 black to FFF 
FFF white, then all black pixels will be made into white pixels. Obviously you wouldn't alter just one pixel color range, you'd alter a whole range of colored pixels but in different ways and this list of those changes is what a LUT is. Now that is a very basic explanation but I hope it does explain it. So why would you use a LUT? Once made a LUT is a bit like a macro or for Photoshop users an action it is a way to alter an image in a certain way in just one click. The main difference really being is that a LUT only affects the colour and tone of an image whereas an Affinity Photo macro or a Photoshop action could be used to do so much more. In fact it may be best to use the LUT near the end of your editing process do all your resizing, cropping, dodging, burning etc first and then use the LUT to get the colours the way you want them to look. So an example of a usage. Now you may not have watched the CSI TV programs but I'm going to use this as an imagined use of the LUTs. There are three CSI programs. The first was set in Las Vegas and was mainly set in as the sun was setting or at night time. Then came CSI Miami which was set in bright Florida sunshine and then came CSI New York which was set in a much colder and drab colour palette. Now part, apart from some special scenes that were outdoor scenes I think for the most part all of these shows were largely filmed in California. So the film cameras may have used coloured filters to achieve the colours or tones they needed for the various shows. They may have also used LUTs. These, made, these they made themselves to use on the scenes they filmed. Then let's us assume that the CSI production company have a plot for an episode but they are uncertain which version of CSI they're going to use the story in. So have sent to me an image they want to look like to be made for all three of the CSI programs. This is a city image which actually come from Pixabay. It needs to be altered in three ways to see if it will work best in either Las Vegas, Miami or the New York CSI shows. Even though, and I believe this is an image of New York, it, um, it needs to fit the show's colour palettes. So I will need a LUT to get it to match each show's basic colour settings. So I've made three LUTs and here is the same image but each time affected by one of the LUTs I have made as a possible colour palette for each CSI show. So the first being New York LUT which made the image much bluer and colder and, and I muted down the colours. Next was the Miami LUT which made the whole image yellower and warmer and I pushed up the colour saturation a bit. Lastly was the Las Vegas LUT which made the whole image look more like an early evening shot with more shadows and less colour overall. I will just then need to add headlights on the cars or lights from the windows. So hopefully you can see how the three different LUTs can alter the same image in such different ways, giving each its own feel and I hope making the image look right for either of the TV shows. To answer the question why use LUTs, I guess the simple answer is to get a uniformed look across the whole video shoot or in our case across a whole set of single images. I use three different adjustment layers to get each of the effects I've used on those various images which on a single image is really not too much hassle. 
But what if you've been given a hundred images all needing the same look or feel? You'd have to make notes of the settings you had used on the first image and repeat the whole process a further 99 times. It's much easier to edit the one image colours and tones and then export that as a LUT and then use that LUT on all the other images so they all work together in colour and tone. Now before moving on to the PC, Mac or iPad version of this tutorial I just want to add that the link for the Pixabay image is in the description for this video on YouTube. You might just need to click on the uh, show more button I think it is. As is the link for two of Olivia Sakari Cass tutorials about LUTs which may explain them better than I have. Plus, in their video descriptions, there are links to download some LUTs. So, after that long intro, which I'm sorry for, uh, we will continue with the actual tutorial, which this, in this case is going to be for the PC and or Mac. Now, those two computers should work pretty similarly. There might be some minor changes, but I'm doing mine on a PC. Now, I'm using this picture which I got from Pixabay and this is the picture I used in my written tutorial which I mentioned earlier. And what I did was I cropped off a lot of what was above here and I rotated the image to make it look like it was like a dead body on the floor to sort of stick within my CSI theme. So, we're now going to look at sort of using the LUTs. Um, there are sort of three ways that you can access the LUTs and two of them you can sort of only make presets but in the other way you can actually sort of import them export them um, so the two ways you can come up to the layer menu new adjustment layer and down to LUT or you can come to this half black and white circle and click on that and LUT is one of the menu options. So those two ways will give you this panel here. And as you can see, you can add presets, but you can't sort of import them in in this way. But the only way to sort of sort of get them into the program is like load LUT. But this will just load it into this adjustment. It won't be sort of kept permanently doing it this way until you add it as a preset so if I sort of load the LUT it will, you can navigate to wherever you saved all your LUT files and like if that program that you you could get could have 5,000 of them you'd have 5,000 listed I mean this one's just 35 um, most there are a couple of file formats that you can use. The one that seems that I've used that works pretty much okay in Affinity Photo is the .cube format. I can't remember the name of the other format. Now the main problem here is for file names uh, because presets, these LUT presets are pretty sort of easy to make but when you save them, you sort of got to give it a file name. Now it would help if the file name was something that made sense to what that f file did. I mean, for example, if it was called like Kodak Vintage Look, you would know that it is going to give you sort of an old Kodak Film Vintage Look. But I mean, with names like Milo or Hyla, what else we got down here? Tegan gives you absolutely no idea what it's going to do. So if you are going to make your own presets, I would advise that you give it a name that you know what that LUT is going to do for you in future. So one I've tried before and I quite like is this Paladin. I mean from that name I've no idea. I mean I think a Paladin is an old soldier so to me that would conjure up the image of someone in a steel armour. 
but if I select Paladin and click open it has now loaded that in and it has made it into a sort of a sepia looking image so I could now add this to my pr presets so if I do add preset and I'm not going to call it the same name I suppose technically I should do for copyright reasons but Paladin doesn't tell me what the thing does so I'm just going to call this dark sepia and then I'm going to put a dash and then pal well, I've got a spell Paladin uh, I think it's like that Paladin so I'll click OK and then you know I could close this down and or edit the picture more but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete that and come back to the original image and then we look at the third method of accessing the LUT and that is from the adjustment tab now by default the adjustment tab should be open but you can access it from the view menu come down to studio and adjustment is like the second one down if it hasn't got a tick next to it just click on it and it will put the tick next to it and open the tab so if you come down to the tabs and select LUT that will open up the list of LUTs that you have installed permanently into the program um, the one I've just made should be down here somewhere here we go dark sepia paladin and as you can see I've already pre-installed the Las Vegas ones which I made for my written tutorial and it does include a new one which is CSI London which again is part of that written tutorial where I sort of said there was an imaginary new program called CSI London and I made a LUT for that so let's have a click on Las Vegas and you might just need to wait a little while for that to work so the Las Vegas one was the nighttime show so that made that the sort of much darker image and I'll skip over London for now we'll come to the Miami one again you just got to wait a little while for the program to catch up and so that is the Miami one which is like the bright daytime show and then New York which was the sort of subdued darker there we go the much darker image so that is basically sort of how you can access and use the LUTs and let me just close that for now and as you can see I don't have a vast amount of them um, I think these first five or six were made by Serif and come with the program but everything after that are ones that I've either made or imported so like there's that vintage Kodak one that I was saying and these are a couple that I made so summer haze so obviously it gives you a sort of a, a much summery and hazy looking image and then there's one from Olivia there and then a few others I think these are from Olivia as well and vintage film look that came from another written tutorial which I did and if I remember I will add that to the links that are in the description for this video so that is how you can sort of add a preset to the list of presets and then how you can access them and you can only access the presets from the adjustment tab um, but as you can see over here on the right there is a cog and if you click on that cog it gives you another menu where you can create new categories rename or delete categories sort categories and this is where you can import categories and export categories um, so if somebody has made like if I made a category with just the CSI LUTs in and then I exported it out you could then if I sort of sent it to you you could then import it um, and import will just 
sort of import individual LUTs and then you can sort LUTs by name. So, let me, here we go. You can see the, the LUT is the only adjustment that gives you options to import and export. So this is what I mean by, if you see advertising on the internet, affinity photo presets, they will just be LUTs. They are quite good and will get some good effects. But like I said, if you had 5,000 of them installed into this list, you'd be forever going through them one at a time and you'd just never get any work done. So it's sort of best to stick to a few that you find that you like and just use those. So basically that is it. So thank you for watching and goodbye.